All right, I want to talk about editing vectors in OpenTunes, and to lay the groundwork for that, let's first clarify what vectors are. Two big categories of digital imagery are raster graphics and vector graphics. Raster graphics, also known as bitmap, are imagery composed of colored pixels in a grid. And if you zoom in, you'll see the color value assigned pixel by pixel. Vector graphics, by contrast, is geometry that's composed of control points. And regardless of zoom, you'll see a representation of that geometry. For a practical example of both, here's a pair of raster and vector graphics in OpenTunes. And from far away, they look pretty similar. But if we zoom in, we'll see the raster imagery is a grid of pixels with color information assigned, while the vector imagery is geometry that stays crisp regardless of zoom or scale. If we wanted to edit this imagery, since the raster data is limited to just these pixels, if we apply changes like rotation or scale, we're losing quality with each transformation. But the vector imagery is generated by control points, and we can edit those as much as we like without losing quality. OpenTunes has some useful tools for this kind of editing, and that's going to be the topic for our next section. So, if the difference between raster graphics and vector graphics is new information, I hope this video has been helpful. If you'd like more information, there's also an article linked below. Uh, now that we've got that covered, let's show some tools for editing our vector brushstrokes in OpenTunes. That's coming up next. A digital stylus is a great tool, but it doesn't feel quite the same as drawing on paper, and sometimes drawing on screen comes out a little different than we'd like. Luckily, OpenTunes has some tools for editing line work, so let's take a closer look at how vector brushstrokes work and how we can edit them. Okay, little heads up, you might notice over here in the level strip, I've got some test drawings that we'll tinker with in just a second, but first, let's just do a quick test vector brushstroke. So I'm gonna tap B for my brush tool, and then I'll just draw a quick line, could be anything at all here. If we select that line, remember we see this dotted line going through the center of it, and that is the vector path that we drew when making the stroke. The black area, the stroke around that dotted line, is actually just a thickness that's been applied to the path with the color that we've got selected in our level palette. So let's take a look at some tools for editing these paths that we can use to edit our brushstrokes in OpenTunes. <clears throat> we'll start with the Select tool. In a previous video, we saw a little of what it can do, so now let's go a bit further. So here we've got a sleeping chicken. I'm going to tap S to switch to my Select tool and then do a marquee selection around that drawing. With the drawing selected, remember you can click and drag on the dotted lines to move it around. You can also use the arrow keys to nudge your selection, and if you want a finer degree of motion with that, you can hold Control and use the arrow keys to nudge pixel by pixel. It's difficult to see that happening at this level of zoom, but uh, trust that it is. We've also got this bounding box around our selection, and we can use the points on that box to scale or rotate. And if we scale from the corner, we can either do freehand or press and hold shift to preserve aspect ratio while scaling. Then if we hold control, we can also skew our selection or apply distortions from the corners while holding control. Be aware with those corner distortions. Uh, sometimes if you go to the extreme with it, you get a kind of weird effect on the thickness of the line that you're distorting. If you want to avoid that, note up in the Select Tool settings there's a checkbox called Preserve Thickness. If you check that, then you can distort to your heart's content, and the line's thickness won't be affected when you do so. But that's not necessarily a setting that you want to keep checked all the time. Uh, for example, if you've got a drawing selected, and you scale it down with preserve thickness checked. Note that the drawing gets smaller, but the lines don't get thinner, ending up with lines that look a little bit too bold. So this is a setting that I find myself toggling a lot when I'm scaling with the select tool. Finally, on the subject of thickness, if you've got a brush stroke selected, note this icon near the left side of the select tool settings. It looks kind of like a divide symbol. If you click and drag on that to the right, you can make your selection thicker. To the left, you can make your selection thinner. You can also select this field and enter numeric values if you prefer. <clears throat> so again, the Select tool is great for transforming full strokes, but let's say we only want to adjust a certain part of a stroke. For that, let's take a look at the Control Point Editor. This tool's hotkey is C, and it has a lot of functionality for us to demo. So if I tap C, 
to switch to my control point editor and then click on a brush stroke, I can see not only the central path that makes up the shape of the stroke, but also the control points that determine the shape of that path. If we click and drag on a control point, we can change its position. Also note that wherever the curve is smooth going through a control point, we've got these bars sticking out of the point, and those are called Bezier handles or tangent handles. You can click and drag on those to change the angle of the curve as it goes through a point. Uh, I'm noticing a couple gaps where my lines aren't quite connecting. You could make a case for that as a stylistic choice, but let's say I want to clean that up. I can use the control point editor to drag the endpoints for my lines and make them connect a little bit more neatly. So I'll do that going on up. Note up here, once we get to the comb, we've got what's called a smooth point where the path is making a gradual curve through our control point. And then we've got a corner point where the curve is making a sharper angle. If you want to convert a point from smooth to corner, then you can alt click on it to convert it. Uh, note that one click will give you an automatic corner point with no tangent handles. If you alt click again, it will stay a corner point, but now you've got tangent handles so you can adjust the angle of that corner. Uh, if you want it to go back to a smooth point, alt click won't achieve that, but if you straighten out the tangent handles and then release the mouse button and click and drag again, then it will behave like a smooth point again with the tangent handles working together. Uh, so with that in mind, if we look at our tail feathers here, the tail would feel a little bit poofier if this point came to a sharp angle instead of the curve it's doing now. So with the control point editor, I'm going to alt click on that to make it a corner point, and then I'm going to adjust the control points around it to get a little bit more poofiness there. <clears throat> so far, we have been working with the control points that were created automatically as I was drawing this. But you can also add or delete more points manually. To add points, you'll want to hold control and click on the line anywhere you want an extra point to show up. Alternatively, if you feel like you've got too many points in an area, you can delete them by clicking and holding and then hitting delete on the keyboard. Technically, you don't have to click and hold. You can just do a quick click to get a point selected and then hit delete to wipe it out. But uh, if you move a point when you click on it, that won't select it. I often find that points move when I click on them, so I find it more reliable to click and hold and hit delete to wipe them out. Now that I've added those points and deleted them, uh, my line's gotten a little bit misshapen through here, so I'm going to adjust these tangent handles again to get that curve back. <clears throat> now that we're familiar with control points, I want to cycle back to the accuracy setting on the brush tool. So I'm going to tap B. Remember, we've got this accuracy setting up here. Uh, to demo that, I'm going to add a couple of Zs for our sleeping chicken here, and I'm going to do one Z with accuracy all the way down, and then I'll do another Z with accuracy all the way up. Okay, <clears throat> note the first Z kind of distorted my brushwork a little bit. The second one looks a bit more accurate. If we look under the hood, though, something to note, uh, checking out the control points on our first Z with that low accuracy, Open tunes use the bare minimum number of points to get the general shape that I was drawing. If we look at the second Z I drew with a higher accuracy, note that it used significantly more points along the way to get that more accurate shape. Uh, <clears throat> pros and cons either way here. If you feel like open tunes is distorting your line work and you've already checked on the smooth value like we talked about before, you can try bumping up the accuracy. On the other hand, if you feel like you're getting more control points than you need, that can sometimes be a lot to manage, so sometimes it makes sense to reduce accuracy a bit more. Again, that 20 value we spoke about before tends to be a happy medium. <clears throat> so, the control point editor is great for changing a line's path. Now let's say we want to change the thickness for just part of a line. For that, we'll use the pump tool. And believe it or not, the pump doesn't have a default hotkey. We'll talk about how to assign one later on, but for now, we'll need to expand the toolbar to find it. So if your toolbar is collapsed like mine is currently, you'll need to click on this triangle below the current tools. That will expand your toolbar, and note the pump tool is right here a little lower than halfway down. If we click on that to make it our active tool, we can hover over a brush stroke and then click and drag up to increase thickness or down to decrease thickness. And note that's limited to just one region, not the entire stroke like the select tool. 
Looking at the pump tool's settings, size is pretty self-explanatory. If we increase this value, then our pump tool will affect a larger region of a brush stroke. If we decrease it, then we can do more fine tuning for small areas of our brush strokes. The accuracy setting is a little bit more subtle, and to show that setting's effects, I'm going to add a little taper to the eyelids. I'm going to do one eyelid with low accuracy and the other eyelid with high accuracy. Before we do that though, I'm gonna hit C for my control point editor real quick and get a count on the control points in each eyelid. Note that they both have three control points right now. So back to the pump tool, I'm gonna to set my size all the way down and then accuracy all the way down for this eyelid and we'll taper those endpoints. And then for this eyelid, we'll crank accuracy all the way up and add that taper again. Note that visually, there's not too much difference between the low accuracy and the high accuracy. If you look really closely, you might see a slightly different tapering, but nothing major. The big difference is actually under the hood. If we go back to our control point editor and click on our low accuracy eyelid, not a major change. If we go to the high accuracy eyelid, that higher accuracy setting resulted in a lot more control points being added. The bottom line is, unless you really need high accuracy results, I recommend keeping this accuracy value low because this is overkill and generally it's best to limit your control points to only what you need. Finally, here is the pinch tool. Uh, I don't use it all that often, but it can be useful sometimes, so I still want to demo it. To switch to the pinch tool, you can tap M and then you can click and drag on a stroke to pull it around kind of like you're applying skew transformations with the select tool. Looking at the pinch tool settings, if this corner value is set all the way down, then the pinch tool will affect the entire stroke that you're adjusting. If it's set to a medium value, then it will affect just part of the stroke. And then if it's set all the way up, it will affect a much smaller part, which can be useful for adding notches or bumps. Uh, not necessarily what I want for this character though. So control Z that. Uh, the size value here, I'm going to level with you. After a fair amount of testing with this value set all the way up, all the way down, and everywhere in between, I have not observed any change in the tool's behavior as a result. It could be that it's doing something I'm not aware of, it could be that it's only relevant in cases I haven't tested, or it could just be a legacy setting that used to do something but doesn't anymore. Uh, if anybody knows more about this setting, feel free to share it with me because I'm always happy to learn something new. But even with that mystery unsolved, I hope these tools have been helpful for you. I'm going to do a little bit more finessing here, so bear with me for a moment. <clears throat> And then for comparison's sake, here is the drawing before those changes and after the cleanup that we've applied. So now we've gone over the main tools that I use to edit lines and open tunes. Next up, let's talk about the eraser tool, which takes some getting used to, but can still come in handy. That's coming up next. In an earlier video, I mentioned that the open tunes eraser tool can behave a little differently than users might expect. Yep. So, in the spirit of understanding, let's take a closer look at how it works. <clears throat> so, like we covered in the last section, in open tunes, a vector brush stroke is really just thickness that's been applied to a geometric path. With the eraser tool, if the eraser doesn't intersect with that central path, it's not going to have any effect on the stroke. It only works if it intersects with the path, and if it erases some of that path, that results in some of the stroke disappearing. This isn't always what we want, so I'm going to demo some alternatives where the eraser tool might not be ideal. So onto this example now, very classy, but we've got some issues with our quill and ink drop up here. First of all, ink drop doesn't look much like an ink drop. We'd like more of a teardrop shape on this, and it's tempting to use the eraser tool and just kind of try and shave away at the top of the drop but unfortunately that's not how the eraser tool works in open tunes so instead i'm going to switch over to my pump tool and make sure that my size is nice and low and i'm going to use the pump to thin down the top of the drop and then thicken up the bottom maybe repeat the top one more time there until i've got that teardrop shape we want uh, for a little bit more refinement i might select it and stretch it vertically to accentuate that drop shape a bit more 
All right, then moving on up to the quill, we've got some messiness here where these lines are not coming together like we want them to. You could technically tap E to switch back to the eraser tool and chip away, but it's not precise and you run the risk of erasing one when you mean to erase the other. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. And instead I'll tap C to switch over to my control point editor. And then I can move the endpoints for my lines to make them come together exactly how I want. So those are some alternatives for the eraser tool, but the eraser does come in handy every once in a while. It can be useful if you need to interrupt a line to add more details like these notches in the quill. Uh, to break up this line, I can tap E to switch over to my eraser and then erase away a gap where I want this new notch to go. Then tap B to switch back to my brush tool and draw in the extra lines for that new notch. You could do that with the pinch tool like we showed in the previous section. I prefer though the manual control of drawing in that kind of detail with the brush. So now we've spoken a bit more about the eraser tool and about cleanup in general. And be aware that kind of cleanup becomes very important when we start adding color, which will be our next topic. So stay tuned. I hope you find these videos helpful, and if so, subscribe for more tutorials and check out thundercluck.com, especially if you have any young readers or fans of animation in your life. Thanks for watching.